back. Um, we've just finished in Rima A. Um, you've just been watching a session in Rima A, which was breakout four, I believe, which was the audience engagement and organizational challenges. We're back now in the live streaming room. We wanted to carry on the live stream. Sit down. You can sit down. We are live streaming. We are live. So like, sit down, sit down, sit down. Magnus, you, you just came back. You don't mind me asking you over your dinner. Is that cool? We're, we're kind of doing it. We've got mics. I've got a mic. Oh, good point. Okay. No, you can eat. It's you okay. Can eat. Yeah, no, no, you can we eat. Can eat. Relax. We're, we're carrying on the stream so that people are. I mean, they're eating. They're, they're sitting eating. at home. They've just gone to the fridge. In fact, in fact, come back. Huh? Um, no, quickly. Um, you Quite mentioned good. that sometimes you, you've just been in the session. Yeah. 140 characters isn't yeah. enough. What do you mean by that? Well, um, I think it's 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 um, it's nice at least also for the audience uh, watching on live here um, to reflect live uh, and direct of um, what I'm you know perceiving from these uh, breakouts. Um, although it very quickly, I was in an, um, um, in a session where Uffe from uh, Denmark, the guy who uh, made the world online orchestra. And a girl here from um, Iceland, whose name is uh, Berglund, were talking about classical music and what uh, issues they have um, in terms of um, yeah, creating new audiences and gaining new audiences. And, and you know, there is some sort of um, a, red, um, a red thread, is it? Yeah, you know that? A red thread. I yeah, mean. yeah, man, I, um, there are some, uh, it's a Danish thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I mean is that there are so um, there are issues that are uh, basically basically the same uh, challenges or right. issues uh, okay. from in other areas in other areas not right. only classical music right but it was just uh, it was very very interesting and you know I've I've been to classical concerts a few times but uh, they were talking a lot about you know you know life and you know what it creates for you when you're there in terms of if you can you can like. Um, make a similarity to, for instance, going to the cinema. It's a lot more, you know, you need to put yourself in there. You need to let go of yourself. You need to embrace, be a, it. embrace it and be a part of it. And just, um, yeah, let go of your emotions and just take it in. And it's very, very interesting. But it's also complex, you know, because there are so many other offers for the potential audience right. and the competition it's extreme, so it's attention for eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. and the hearing is <laughs> exactly. like literally that's being captured all yeah. the time. I'm going to let you carry on with your dinner. So Hope you're enjoying the morning. I'm going to pass yeah. over to CJ because she has Kamara. Oh, Aha, <laughs> we are live. We are live. <laughs> what microphone? Can here? you get over? Thank to you. That table side. Sure. Where's the camera? Is over it there? there? Yeah. There. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, Just dropped it on you. How has the day been for you so far? Where have you been? What have you been up to? I think I've been everywhere, actually. <laughs> hmm? uh, oh, everywhere on Harpa, it feels like. So this is Kamara, and Kamara is one of the co-producers here on the ground um, with Ada. Um, as, I say, as I say, first names I've mastered with you guys, but uh, not necessarily the last names. So do you just want to introduce yourself, say a little bit about yourself, and, and then sort of what sessions you've been in? Yeah, I can say that my name is Kamara uh, Juf. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Norway. Uh, but I've been working in Copenhagen, uh, co-producing this conference, uh, both with content and design and finding CJ and Phil and just like delegating <laughs> this whole digital concepts. Like I just got a Twitter three weeks ago. It's, it's, I find it very confusing. Uh, but um, I'm a performance artist and a musician and... Uh, a political and cultural advisor for arts institutions, and now apparently I'm a conference producer as well. <laughs> so interested yeah. in developing audiences. So who who are your audience? Oh, my audience. Actually, I, I my core audience that I write for are, uh, are youth, youth and kids. Uh, so that's what I do, developing that audience, or at least trying to engage them. So I've so um, written a play recently, which has been. Um, commissions and taken up to be produced. So just tell us a little bit about your play and who's that written for? Oh no, I'm writing a play, uh, a one hour monologue for high schoolers. Uh, that's about deconstructing the power structures in the Norwegian language. Basically, it's about sexism and racism and the patriarchy and yeah, you know, 
So that's that's an audience that it's kind of a defined audience, isn't it? That you're taking your work into schools. Yeah, it's to... uh, they're very accessible <laughs> when <laughs> when we have them at the place where they can't escape, and then we just give them art. Yeah, and hopefully some of them will like it. So uh, do, yeah. is, do you think there's that's where the seeds of, of art gets given to young people. I know, I mean, my first experience of theatre was going to see a show as a kid, and that, that ignited, that one experience does set off a chain of events that, that changes yeah, your whole me, life. Yeah, for me, it was just going to a musical with my grandmother seeing Annie, and my entire life just <laughs> changed. I, I remember it exploded just in that moment when she started belting that, like, you know. The sun will yeah, come up. Tomorrow, yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I, I really t think that it's uh, not just, um, you know, necessary and important that, that, that kids get exposed to art, mm. but I really feel that it's so important to stimulate them to be creative and express themselves as well. So, and I think that's what we've seen a lot, especially I was in module one, breakout one. Okay. Uh, no, breakout three, up in North Hughes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and it was just a lot of stations talking about different interactive uh, uh, projects that they've done. And I see that now with the, with the iPads and the technology and what we're doing was like it was building on the Medea, the Music mm. Experience Design uh, case presentation, is that everybody's allowing the children to co-create the music. They're sitting there with their small apps and they're also creating the music. And I think that that form of engagement is so important and more accessible now than it was when I was a kid. If you didn't, if your parents couldn't afford violin mm. lessons, you just didn't get any art. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think we'll be getting a few more comments from you later today. I think sure, you right go. now, you need to go and get some food. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so great that you're here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you later. No, I was charging this. That was my plan. You were charging. charging. I will put some charging uh, so in that was for Kamara. you. Uh, Kamara is one of the co-producers of the event uh, with Adur. And uh, we're going to have a quick chat in about five minutes' time with uh, one of the guys from the streaming company, Sonic, uh, who have been uh, bent over backwards to help us. A bit, a bit like Harper has been amazing to pull things together. Asking him for different custom <laughs> positions of the camera and pulling it around is kind of an unusual job for... Mm. For a live streaming company, they set up a camera here, set up a camera there. They have to mix and fade, but we've done a few little custom things because we're doing something different. But why are we doing it? Why why have we switched to this? Well, I don't need the microphone. Don't need that. Your I mic have the microphone. I think one of the things. Yeah. You, <laughs> that's right. Just wave to the camera. Just wave. <laughs> just do this. <laughs> uh, it's great to be amongst the delegates. I think that's one thing. I mean, there's five elements to this audience experience. And one is the live stream, which traditional, you've seen North News. But we wanted to bring you out into the wider conference. Yeah. That's okay, Scott. Just wave to the camera as you go it's past. It's all good. 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 <laughs> and uh, we've got Ollie coming in now. Yeah, so we can talk forever. So. Hey, Ollie. Oh, I'm clipped here. Oh, you're clipped. Oh, good. Hey. Of course you are, because you're the guy who's looking after it. The so don't panic. It's a very simple question. This, this side. It's a bit... It's a bit more scary this side of the camera, isn't it? It is. Is this unusual for you? It's this very setup? unusual. Is, uh, it, is it a little bit more than what you would normally do? No, not really. It's kind this of just the configuration side of it. It's quite normal, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 What, what do you think the biggest challenges are for live streaming at events? You go to a lot of events. Yeah. You know, you're trying to cover the event. You have different teams that work with you better. Yeah. What, what would you say is the biggest challenge for, for, all the, for audience developers tuning in now going... Yeah we need live streaming. Yeah. How do we communicate with them better? Yeah. What do you think we need to do? I would say that it's the combining of uh, so many aspects. You need a proper internet connection. Yeah. You need all the content, the video, the audio, uh, uh, from the project to the slides. Right. And to make all of these things work. And you need properly. that ahead of time, right? I mean, it's ideal. The faster you get those assets, mm. the, the, the easier it is for you to work. Right? Uh, absolutely. I think that happens a lot, is a lot of venues and places are, oh, we'll get it in the morning, we'll get it at night. Absolutely. Okay, but the team that is being integrated into your space, if they have everything, yeah. you can cover it. You can absolutely. get it done. So, yeah. so, I mean, this, this, this is unusual to have the live streaming in there. Did, did yeah. this feel a bit weird today, or uh, it's a different thing? Yeah, it's a little bit different thing, but it's, it's casual and, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's nice. It's yeah. relaxed. I like it. 
doesn't it? It does. Yeah. We've saved you now, Ollie. That's it. You don't have to do any more. <laughs> he, was, he, was a, he was a bit worried. He was a bit worried. So, so how long is it? Uh, one last question. How yeah. long has Sonic actually been going? The Sonic was formed uh, uh, this uh, spring. Right. And uh, out of uh, one of the biggest IT companies in Iceland uh, that decided to uh, focus more on the computers and IT factor. Yeah. And obviously streaming is only a part of sure. of Sonic. Uh, so we also make co concerts and uh, conferences and uh, all these. Uh, so it didn't fit into the business model of the IT company. No, so they not. just so sold the whole division to two of the managers who right. are running today. Yeah. And doing No, that's good. Very good. It's doing great. Yeah. yeah. How, do, how do you... Sorry, CJ, go ahead. One of the things that I think with arts audience development, there's a lot of people that they're very much used to dealing with everything in front of the curtain, if you like, the sort of theatrical terms. Um, and behind the scenes is something that is, is kept very mystical and it's kept yeah. out of the way. And, yeah. and we dress in black and <laughs> we stay behind the curtains and we know when we're not being seen in the wings. Yeah. And this, this kind of, I mean, this is for conference, but I think moving forward in terms of engaging in festivals and bringing the live audience how how are you finding the the communication between these artistic organisations and the technical side of what you're able to provide? What tends to be the communication barrier? That's well, a big question, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is quite a big question. I'm not even sure I can answer it, but it's. Uh, or is there one? So. So, so are, are you asking if about uh, the understanding of, of, of the equipment? Or, yes, or? I think there is a certain yeah. level of that. Is do, do do your clients necessarily know what they're asking for? I guess that's a huge thing. Yeah. You have to do a lot of education on that side. Not too much, actually. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if it's because Iceland is uh, rather uh, inf informed about uh, IT and uh, right. So it's it's good access to everything. Right. And also, we have many uh, regular customers. Right. Uh, so you're constantly doing it, yeah. improving so, and communicating. It. Yeah. So, so people know that we just take care of things. So, yeah. I think I'm moving to Iceland. I, yeah. I mean, like suddenly, I mean, like the IT stuff is great. Yeah. Uh, like the the, in, the interaction, the comms is great. Like and the food is. I know you're not oh, able to sample stunning. the food, the but food we have thank you for all your work so far. Sonic are doing an amazing job. What's the website for Sonic? Sonic.is. Yeah, Sonic.is. S O N I K. Perfect. Ollie, thank you very much for your continued support. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you. Ollie. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. So we've just. Um, from 11 o'clock till lunchtime, we've literally just had five breakout sessions. Mm. Um, we're, the bloggers did come back. They briefly. did. They're, they're, they're eating on the table to the side of us there. Yeah, so at some point, we will get a conversation with the bloggers and find out from the bloggers if they, um, you know, what their takeaways were from the different sessions. Because being, being in the bloggers' lounge and waiting for bloggers to come back and looking at the schedule, making sure we have the camera in the right place. Although, although the team, Although that Sonic are great at putting the camera together, do all the mixing, we don't. You know, we need to. We need to drive them to tell them where things here. go. But the this afternoon, module two, which yep. is the more digital and um, transmedia stuff, um, we'd said to our bloggers, we'd like you to select sessions, um, and I think this is good tips for anyone attending conferences. Um, is your stream through a conference what do you really want to attend what do you want to amplify and what do you want to learn from and I think we tried to look at that when we were composing the live stream experience that we wanted to take you on a stream through the conference um, we were a little bit restricted on we wanted to pick a space so we picked Rima A and we're delivering you those sessions rather than jotting all around the place. Yeah, I'm very, so, I'm very keen also with people watching along on the live stream. Did they run off to the kitchen to get something to eat? Like, because when I'm watching the live stream, yeah. it's kind of, I'm going to get to lunch. You have this preparedness for lunch. If you're, if you're watching along and you have been tweeting this morning with audi audience uh, arts ord 14 hashtag, Please send us a photo of where you are right now in yeah. the world, like watching along. I know there's 70-ish of you watching along Which live streaming. Cool. If you have Twitter, please get Twitter out on your phone. Um, take a photo of your environment, where you are, even a, maybe a picture of the screen so we can see you watching the live stream 
uh, and put arts arts ord 14 as a hashtag and it should display on our tweet yeah. wall uh, but we do have people ma managing our tweet wall so don't worry about you know we have got um, say the i'm sure you found the live embed on the on one side or you found it somewhere otherwise you wouldn't be watching yeah but i'm going to put a tweet out for the embed and the page that is on the audiences europe network who are the associates who are, are helping us be here really yeah absolutely um, it was audiences europe that kind of found us and started working with us which is how we've ended up coming to this space yeah. and we'll be getting some of the audiences europe partners into the lounge um over the next day yeah um, but I, i'm going to put that link out because we've got spot.im okay on there yeah um so we're going to have a look at some tweets um we'll probably have a chat with you but we're not going to have anything structured structured yeah no i was just gonna and, I, was, um, I was just actually I, I don't know if the guy uh, on the desk can see my phone or zoom into the phone at all maybe he can i don't know but this is a an app uh busybow if you've not downloaded it yet it's a free app but cj took a huge <laughs> amount of time like literally three or four days filling out all the schedule and everything so do go through it because there is some incredible speakers and talks here today about audience development and a lot of um a lot of shared intellect and intelligence that needs to be sort of spread out and also the questions that the questions that you're asking please you know feed them back because mm. there is people here ready for those questions we just need to be able to take them from the digital audience and give it to you um, have you got some stats of the reach and have yeah, a look at some of these no, tweets? So and I we, might go for wonder and see if I can drag some you're people. You're going to catch in. some people. I'm, I'm going to. I see Nielsen Ingrid there, okay. standing tall. So we're using so uh, tweetwall.com today, and on the hashtag artsord14, it tracks sort of uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We've had so far on the stats near nearly new 913,000 like impressions, me in the and I think we've had 120,000, 130,000 uniques, which for a morning for four hours is pretty darn good for tweets. Um, I think it's around 270 odd tweets, and about five per hour, I think it is. CJ's gone off to capture people that she can bring here. Um, the fascinating thing for me about live streaming this kind of style of event is that we normally just stop the live stream and you'll be sitting at home just dead like waiting for something else to happen and you'll be following along with twitter before you knew how to tune in again so this is completely new for me for us to switch from a camera in a session straight into the bloggers lounge and actually capture the buzz that's happening in the background i'm not quite sure what the picture is like <laughs> but i'm being being accosted i i just love being part of this i've just been talking about that yeah I was just saying it's quite random to switch from one stream to another yeah. stream and expect people to be. Yeah, I mean, I think as, for us as social media practitioners and social technology um, explorers, how this technology can be absorbed and embedded into real life experiences. I mean, that, that camera effectively could be, a mo I mean, there is mobile ca cameras that mm. could literally go around the venue and it can literally follow people around if you had the right kind of gear. So we, yeah, we could do, couldn't we? Are we going to grab a few people out? Well, it's already freaking them out having this great big bloggers <laughs> lounge in the middle of the place. So let's have a look at the schedule for this afternoon. I'm going to have a quick look at um, what happens after lunch. Neil's is going to come over soon. Fab. Okay, so Neil, who was doing a session in Rima A just before we sent over, is coming in. Um, 12.30 was a lunch and pit stop, uh, and that came over to us. We did a little interview with um, Ollie. We're doing, there's an artist intervention again at 1.45, uh, where they're putting together an ensemble of band of dance performance. I'm not quite sure which that is. But I wanted to go through the modules for this afternoon, because the modules this afternoon are really, really interesting, especially the one from Tony. Uh, module two at 2.15 is, I'm an analog girl in a digital world, uh, interactive theater and game design, multimedia and online participation, co-created by CKI and Tony. Um, Annette makes immersive theatre, interactive experience and adventures. So, I mean, literally, if you're doing any kind of audience engagement whatsoever, there is loads and loads of different sessions. If you want to get any messages to those people, like I say, use the hashtag artsord 40 Magnus, yeah. come and join me, my friends. I will. I will. I stick to... Everybody's getting power. This is why we have a bloggers lounge. It wasn't just about us um, carrying on the continuity from one stream to another. The biggest problem at conference centers is finding power. So we made sure that we had a breakout area for the power. And the Wi-Fi has been really good as well. The actual Wi-Fi has managed to stay up 
CJ's just getting dessert and cake. Oh, that was for me. No, well, it's for, for us. Oh, we're sharing it. How's it going so far? Well, food, food was amazing. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, I really could go. I, oh, if there's any left, I'm, without sitting if, down. If there's any left, I'm going to get more. Come back soon. Oh, well, the food was really, really great. I'm actually. Um, what am I doing next? Which session are you next? Yeah, yeah. This, 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 this is another. Yeah, this is another thing that we. You. Oh, I'm getting given all sorts. It's like <laughs> it's like some kind of carry on game. Um, we we do have a schedule, okay. so we're gonna we're gonna find out what you are into next. <clears throat> but this is the one thing that we're doing as a concierge in the Vloggers Lounge is that we have six or seven Nordic vloggers from all over the place. Who some of them have been vlogging recently, some of them have been you know a long time trying to find out where they're going and which sessions they go to so that they they can feed into their own module module five uh, at the end of tomorrow so they get seven minutes on stage are you a bit worried about that or are you going to be oh, tomorrow yeah i think you're going to be awesome at it well, yeah thanks i think you're just going to get up and just rock it and go can well, i have yeah. like more minutes yeah we've can i get seven yeah can i like get 10 minutes and if you want autographs i'll, I'll get my way out <laughs> we've got our second biclone attempt yes yes so we must see if we can um so sort what that out, so. do you want to tell people about biclone well we're going to attempt um, what we're calling an app attack. App attack. An app attack, um, where we're all going to download the same app that works co-creatively, and in this case, it's Viclone, um, Viclone.com. You can look, download it and have a look at it. I'm not sure that it'll probably pick you up geographically, but those of us that are here on the ground, if we open the app and film simultaneously, Music events work best because you've got a underscore to the, the video. It picks up all the people who are live streaming and it will mix it in real time. Yeah, it's amazing. It's great. So we're going to have a go at that with one of the um, interventions, yeah. which so, is straight after lunch. So you, you basically say have four or five different cameras, might be iOS, Android. Um, you all fire up the application at the same time. You might be in different viewing angles around a venue. And what it does, the first person who fires up the app becomes the curator of the sound, and then everybody else around it adds their image to it. So, yeah, we're going to have a go at doing those. Yeah, what time do we go back to the mainstream? 12.55? Um, 13.45. Okay, so we have a 45-minute window here in the, in the live do. studio. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? We need to find out what the sessions are in, actually, don't we? Yeah. We need to find out, the guys. We need to pull some people in. You see, everybody's eating. We're going to say, um, you can come and sit down, but we will ask you about your day so, so far. So people are coming out of Rima B now, uh, and they're, they're actually just realising that everybody's been eating. That must have freaked them out. <laughs> that must have freaked them out to come out, and there's a group of people already out. <laughs> I've got to tell you, from, from a venue perspective, like, it, it just flows perfectly to me. Yeah. You know, the, the ability for the venue to be spread out like it is, but actually find somewhere. Got another vlogger back. Swap, swap places. You're, you're quite welcome to swap walk places. past, but we might grab you for a sit down She's going to get food. She's scared. She's hey, running away. Hey, there's another one. She's running away. <laughs> no, we're well, going to get a lot of that. No, well, but going walking back. in front of the camera, would you like to come and tell us how your day's gone so far? Everybody's scared to death. Oh, they're all scared to death. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, what am I doing? Who's this? And that's the, that's the, it is one of the difficult things, and especially when we're, we're brought into events and we're asked to well, you think live stream. You think or you're a news team from something. It's a bit yeah. like when people ask me, you know, what's the, where's the content going? That's the biggest yeah. question I get asked: is who's it for and where's it going? And I understand that you, you know, are, am I being paid for the content? Is it being used on TV? You know, yeah. am I able to talk about yeah. those things? It's kind of all the things that you need to get the sign off for. But I also think that stops audience development because if you're constantly, you know, yeah. having to, to, to ask somebody. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. When people say, where's it going? I go, well, it's going to my audience. Yeah. And I go, well, who are my audience? It's like, well, there's hey. people on Twitter. Hey. So here we have a uh, the microphone. There you go. Have a, have a seat. Have a seat. She's like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm being accosted. Oh, no. How are you? I am How's it going? Well. It's going well. It's just lovely to see the house fill up with people. Does it feel like, do you feel a bit more relaxed? I do. I definitely do, yes. I think it's all coming together. And when people have their food, yes, that's really important. Everyone's <laughs> happy. Yeah. So we've got Kamara and yourself yes. uh, are doing the co-producing today. Yeah. What's been your biggest takeaway so far? Have you been in any of the sessions particularly? Well, 
have to be completely honest, as being the main producer, I You're have just, just been running on. in and yeah. out <laughs> yeah. of the sessions. That's how we feel. Yes. We're literally concierge to all exactly. the bits that are happening. Yeah. Well, from the tweets going out, so yeah. far we've hit over a million uh, in terms of reach, Brilliant. which is really quite good. That is really For four good. hours, it's really yeah, quite good. Yeah, that is really good. And we... about 140,000 unique, so that means 140,000 unique Twitter accounts have seen those messages. And that's in four hours, so I think we're going to yes. have some good stats yeah, by the end of yeah. day one. I think we, we've had about 70 to 80 people watching live. Yep. Okay. Which is, which is pretty good, because if, good. if we can get that up to the same amount of audience that we've got in the building, yeah. that means we have like a mirror, yeah. Yeah. which would be great. Exactly. Yeah. Have you had lunch yet? I have not had lunch. Right. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. But I did notice... What I found really enjoyable uh, in the sessions that I went in and out of is that I feel that we have a very kind of interactive crowd and people are asking questions and uh, we are managing to have a good discussion with people. So that's, you know, one of the things that we, we really were aiming for. Yeah, I think you've nailed that in about four hours. Now we're going to do this for another two days. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'd be cool. We're going to let you get some lunch because right. you must be yeah. hungry. And then so, come back thank and talk you. to us later. I will. Yes. I will. Definitely. Thank, thank you. you. Girls, do you want to come in? Have a seat. Come Bring your food. Seat. Bring your food. Bring your food. Come back. I'm going to go and get a plate of dessert for me. Have a seat. We're literally bringing in. So we're going to have lots of issues with the, the cameras. Stream, and the you'll be on camera. Going past. <laughs> yes. How are you? Does that scare you? What was your session like? Yeah. Was it anything in there that you thought oh, that's useful, or was it kind of stuff you've heard before? No, it's like a different approach to culture and how society works than that I have, I think. Okay, do you want to elaborate on that? How do you mean? Like, making more people engage in culture is not for me, like, making the audience at an Oprah participate in some very artificial reason. Like, for me, you make culture, culture available, for more, available for more people by, by, like, changing how the resources in the society right. is. Right, right. Is, uh, so you find, so you find it like a, a manipulation of that? Yeah, yeah it, it feels like more like you just scratch on the surface of the problem, but it's, 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 it's the problem is so much deeper. So do you think before we can even develop the audience, we need to be looking at each other in terms of how we interact with each other before we can even think about the audience? I think that we can think about the audience, but then we need to like, we can't, we're not supposed to do it every time. Right. And it depends so much on the context. Right, right, of course, of course. Tell me a little bit about 52 Hertz. <laughs> it's a podcast that I created yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, well, I've only got three episodes, but I'm making the fourth this afternoon, I think. I did. All right, cool. Uh, and it's <laughs> about a lonely whale. <laughs> about a lonely whale? Yeah, it's with me here outside the Reykjavik right now. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. It just decided to, because the conference was so good, it yeah, yeah, yeah. had to develop its whale audience. Yeah. All right, so why 52 hertz? That doesn't make... Because it sings on a high frequency. It sings in 52 hertz. And normally a whale sings in, like, 20 hertz. Right. But this whale has been heard since 1989 by scientists in 52 hertz. Right. And other whales can't hear that high frequencies. Wow. So it's the world's loneliest whale. That kind of makes me sad. So it's an audience of one. No, it's, 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 a, it's a singer... Who, who's not aware that it has an audience. Right, right, right. Okay, that's an but interesting... somehow one. just, like, people all over the world are obsessed with... Well, you would be, because how, would, yeah. how do we communicate with it? Maybe we need to start putting messages out in 52 hertz. Maybe we yeah, need to start... but it has a Twitter account, so you can tweet to it. Okay, what's the Twitter account? I don't remember. Okay, so it's, it's 50, like 52 search... hertz spelled H-E-R-T-Z, I think it's, right? Yeah, I think it's, like, 52 hertz whale or something. Right, okay. I'm going to let you finish your dinner now. Thanks. But which, which sessions are you in this afternoon? Do you know? No, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> i tell you what. There's a cake sitting here. This cake... I'm, is this mine? No, I'm not going to eat it now. I, I, feel like I, I feel like I should be talking. I feel, this, once I'm in, in front of a video camera, I'm also aware that I'm trying to put myself in third person. Yeah. If I was sitting at home in front of a video camera, you know, why would I stay around? You know, why, why would I just shut the stream down and come back after lunch? But I kind of wanted people to feel that you you could ask any questions that you've you've seen some sessions, you've heard yeah. some tweets, yeah. and feed that back. So I'm waiting for people to yeah, for to sure. post stuff up here, especially if there's people sitting there with their cat and dog. 
because I wouldn't normally be able to take the cat and dog to a conference in my salon. I mean, can, 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 can we ask them if they're out there? Please I've, I've just uh, tweet us a picture yeah. of something. That's what I said. What are you eating? Yeah, I just I, mean, I kind of wanted to see that because you know this is a new kind of audience development for me. That kind of continuity yeah. from like going from one camera to another camera, but with no kind of pauses in the middle. Yeah. So, you know, today, oh, you've no, been no, watching I'm, along. I'm just greedy. I'm yeah. just greedy. I, I just want all of it now. I think that's a great thing within two days of this conference, that, you know, if you've tuned in today and you're watching along and you do find it, that you feel that you can probably try and engage. That's what we want you to try and do. And if you find it difficult, we want to know why as well. Yeah. Or if this is completely pointless. Cause, well, um, I think finding your voice, I think pressing that initial tweet and going, why would I, you know... They don't know me. I don't know what they're about. I don't know their backgrounds. You know, I'm more than willing to answer that question. Now, I've given you a conduit into this moment now. You've got the ability to ask it. Mm. And I think that's pretty much what audience development uh, execs have that problem is, like, who are the audience? How do we communicate with them? What is it that they want from that experience? So I'm just, I'm just super chuffed that we also got food before everybody hit the <laughs> thing. And I can just see the mountains, like, just outside the window here as well. It's an absolutely stunning venue. In terms of conference places for us to do live streams, I don't think I've ever been to such a gorgeous venue. Would you like to come and have a chat? Would you like to come and have a chat? Come and have a chat. As a photographer, tell me what's been going on. He's like, <laughs> I've got nothing to say. There's no cameras here. Have a seat. There's no cameras. <laughs> We're not recording. Don't sit on my cake, though. Hello, sir. Hello. Marcelo. Marcelo, yes. Who's Marcelo? Marcelo is from CQA. Okay. Yeah, and he's a designer and artist. And okay. Is this overwhelming for you? <laughs> is this overwhelming <laughs> no, for no, me? No, 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 no. It's, it's, <laughs> it's overwhelming for me having to have two disparate like groups of audiences, one in the analog realm, which yeah. is here, and a digital realm and talking back to them. Um, I've seen you sort of floating around taking photos. Yes. Do you, are you a photographer as well? or Kind of. You're like a media maker, uh, transmedia. I documented it. I'm uh, making good. documentation. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Today, the whole day. Uh, no, have you been doing it before? Is that what you did before? Or you just uh, I, I do uh, art projects and design. You do a bit of everything, don't you? Yeah. You're an artist, aren't you? Kind of. It's yeah. kind of just like get on with it. Yeah. What's been, um, have you picked up on anything this morning as you pass people in the hallways? Or have you had any conversations that have made you? I, I'm looking at everything from outside because sure. I'm taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, but but I, I could see that was in the breakout session was really interesting. In uh, Norlus was was like an interesting d dynamic. Yeah, uh, I'm not with, sure who that was. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> with the uh, small groups, right? Where I could see that people, it was more intimacy and they could right. more dynamics. And right. And I, I saw that was really. Interesting. Do you think the breakouts are working well? Do you think yeah, yeah, because it giving a little breath. Yeah. If not, it could be too heavy. Too much information. Yeah, overload, it's all the overload. time. So, so the, I think the breakout sessions are good. Are you going to sit in any of the breakout sessions, or do you just like to float around? No, I'm, I'm follow around. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And too. just a looker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've also got um, Rich Hadley here. Thank you, Marcel. I, have you had dinner yet? Have you, have you had food? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you. We have uh, Rich Hadley joining us in the studio. I think she. Do you, do you want the, no, you have the mic and you can talk to. Oh, to he's Rich. coming over there first. Oh, I will move. Oh, I will move. I see you if you like. Yes, no, sit there. That'd be fabulous. <laughs> yeah. The camera, the camera guy will move everything around to, to that side. We're just plugging in. We've got a combined combined bloggers lounge with. That's that's. We're over there, Rich. Um, the can camera's I have over the there. Microphone? Yes, of course. There we go, Rich. All right. Hi. Oh. <laughs> right, well, I'm, I'm not yeah. looking at the camera. Rich, I'm, I'm you can looking at you. Occasionally. Rich Hadley, the man behind Audiences Europe. Yes. And, and, and my understanding and adventure into audience development as it stands. Thank you very much, I think. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we're, we're part of the UK contingent, aren't we, that have come over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. And so just, just sort of... Reflect. Reflect. And also, a bit about yourself, a bit about Audiences Europe, because the Bloggers Lounge and the live experience is really in association with Audiences Europe because it's where all the things that we've learned from case studies, from attending conferences and breakouts and as we've gone round Europe with the audiences um, at open all areas, which you're going to do a session on later, 
this is a little bit of a culmination of what we're trying to help audience developers have the dialogue about this outreach as well. So tell yeah. us about you and about audiences you Well, first of all, I want to say that the food is amazing. <laughs> it is like too good. Have you had any uh, yet? We have. We have. And like, I am... Really, I want to get, I get on that table and just like eat <laughs> until I till I die. It's so delicious. So it's nice to be in Iceland. Obviously, the all butter cakes are just fantastic. So this is the most important thing I want to say just for now. Yeah. Uh, we've but, had our own bloggers' table with coffee and biscuits and orange, and they've really looked after us oh here. My goodness. Well, I mean, it's just it's just staggering. You know. I mean, I just you know. Here we go. Anyway, that's my main kind of exciting um, yeah. revelation of, of, of just now. So, uh, quite excited about everything. This is just an amazing venue um, in this Harper Concert Hall. And have you taken, have you shown the guys on worldwide the view out of the window We've there? not actually. We might have to see if we yeah, can do you a need pan to, round. You yeah. need to have a look at this. We've had uh, the mountains are just absolutely beautiful uh, over at the back of me mm. they're all sculpted with glaciation oh. we've got the sea the wind is like unbelievable <laughs> it was like painful but the sea's whipping up there's snow dusting the mountain tops the sun has come out it's just magical it's it really so is good. it's here. fantastic it's fantastic so yeah i mean we've had a really interesting morning um uh, the whole, the whole business of what, why are we trying to engage audiences, and um, why are we doing that? Is it because it's an obligation? Because the politicians are telling us we should, um, or is it because we think we ought to? Because we've got a social conscience, or is it because we must? Because we have to? Because there's no other reason for doing mm. what we do so this is an inch it's been an interesting debate okay. we've had this morning and um, i was really really impressed with uh ufe Sav savory okay. from the copenhagen philharmonic and he's such a great guy have you interviewed him yet we've not no not yet okay we will, well he's we'll a really he's a fantastic guy um i was talking to him last night he's a uh, i mean a really talented percussionist classical percussionists played in orchestras and you know the top orchestras in uh, in Denmark and uh, elsewhere and uh, then he also did his own solo career as a classical percussionist playing marimba mm -hmm. and so on and then he kind of got interested in house music and on his first see uh, his first tune that he put out he uh, like went gold went like platinum <laughs> went stellar and it was just like a club anthem hit. Um, and then now, so he's like a big house musician, you know, bow down with respect any house, house ju junkies out there. Now he runs the, he's the CEO of the Copenhagen Philharmonic Orchestra, um, his classical passion. Mm. Um, and what an interesting guy. So he doesn't see any distinction between, you know, stuff that's been played in clubs and, you know, Brahms and Beethoven in the concert hall. So a really amazing story. And that's the kind of energy, I think, that, mm. yeah, that's really exciting me. So me, uh, yeah, well, Audiences Europe Network. Um, so we're a learning uh, network, peer-to-peer -peer network network. Um, looking at audiences, arts and audiences, the whys and the hows and the, uh, the experiences and the learnings that, we, that, that people around Europe have generated mm. through working with audiences. So this has been a kind of journey that we've been on for the last 15 yeah. years. Um, and quite a few of our family uh, are here today in the room. And uh, it's really great to meet new people as well from the Scandic Network. Because the, the Danish partners of Audiences Europe are, are the, the, well, the reason why um, Phil and I are involved in terms of, of PCM. So that, that's been interesting of how that outreach has worked. Yeah. And in terms of, sort of the people that are members, I think this whole conference of, for a, for a conference 
about audience development for audience developers to explore audience development. Mm -hmm. There's, there's mm -hmm. kind of quite a meta theme going on yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah. But I think we mustn't forget that actually the people who are here are looking to how we can take this engagement back into our organisations and institutions. Yeah, yeah. So are the things that you've heard today, have you heard anything from the buzz around you of people who feel that they're learning things or they're reinforcing things? Or is there a tip that, that you could give to people to start an audience dialogue within their organisation? Okay, well, I mean, there were a few memorable quotes that I picked up. Um, uh, one of the speakers, Carolina, um, she said that um, audience engagement is not a strategy to t sell tickets. Um, and Ufe was talking about, um, uh, you know, doing flash mobs in Copenhagen public public spaces in this city, mm. taking the orchestra out and kind of doing gigs out there. Mm. Um, and um, there were worries amongst the orchestra. People were saying, well, you know, is this, our, this is fine, but maybe we need to kind of think about our core activity. And then it's, he turned it around and said, well, hang on, what is our core activity? Maybe actually, yeah, you know, doing gigs, doing concerts in the concert hall, that's core activity. But maybe doing flash mobs is also yeah. core activity. So I don't think yeah. we're, we're really, what really struck it for me is, is not either or. It's not yeah. like, oh, hang on, this is the main important thing that we do in our beautiful palaces of culture. Mm. Of course we need beautiful palaces of culture. They're marvellous. I mean, look at this place. Um, but then on the other hand, um, these places, these institutions present huge barriers to ordinary people not wanting to experience that. So we have to break out of our yeah. black boxes and our glass boxes. They're all glass, and by the is, way, these days. It's taking the artists on the journey with you, because I know but, until and, and, I started working with you, oh. being the other side of the curtain, I have to confess, I'd never really thought about the audience at all. Well, the audience is just something that they're when the curtain opens. Yeah. That's it. And, yeah. and whether you're a They're musician or an artist, you know, you make your art, you put it on the wall, but actually you're quite far removed from the marketing process that goes towards bringing in your audience. Well, I mean, I think there's something even more fundamental about it, CJ, which is that um, the interaction, the experience, if, you, if you're a classical musician and you've always done your concerts, you've practiced... At, 10,000 hours to become competent to be in an mm. orchestra uh, or more. And most of that time, you've spent those 10,000 hours in a quiet room with you and your instruments and possibly your teacher. And then you go into a concert hall, you join an orchestra, which is terribly disciplined, and you do as you're told, and you walk on on a <laughs> Thursday or a Saturday evening. Everybody applauds, and then there's silence, and then you play. And it's wonderful. But those musicians have a, can have a distorted vision of what that music means. They're, they're playing it, and of course that means something incredibly powerful to them. But actually what the audience has experienced is not the same as the thing that they're mm. experienced. So I think, you know, to be able to step out of your routine, step out of your own frame your own and look at your art to look at your creative practice mm. through the eyes of your audience and challenge yourself as to what that means this is as artists then, then as artists then that is something incredibly enriching to mm. bring back to the concert hall mm. and to be able to think about the way so think about the way that that might impact creatively on you and I think that so therefore there's a feedback loop going on here yeah you know as audience members we sit in awe at the orchestra you know the sound is unbelievably staggering mm. but then on the other hand for the musicians to also see the awestruck reactions mm. and to talk to audiences ah, that's magical too mm. so it's not either or. And I think what we've got to do is break down these kind of dualities, these dichotomies. We've actually got to start saying, look, the music, the art, 
exists in relation to audiences. There has to be a listener. There has mm. to be a somebody who looks at the painting. Otherwise, what's mm. the point? Which we've kind of tried to do with the last project with um, Open All Areas. The, there were so many projects that would, were brought into focus for us. I mean, I remember the um, in Rome where we had the case study about the Alzheimer's patients that were taken into the gallery to have this experience of taking audiences in that wouldn't necessarily find it very accessible and doing those kind of things. So, you know, the artists and the creators of buildings. We've had music, first of all. I mean, the next sessions that we're going into, the module two, is much more about digital. So have you looked ahead at the programme? Is there anything that you're really keen to watch? Are there things that, or speakers that you're thinking, this is going to teach me? Are you, do you expect to leave here having learned anything, or is it a reinforcement well, of I was gonna, Well, I was going to say, well, let's, let's, I'll be honest with you. I have a look through the programme, and I'm a really, I'm, I'm a really, look, being a passive viewer, you've got on your screen that <laughs> I am a passive viewer. I really am. I'm the world's worst audience. I don't book ahead. I forget <laughs> that things are on. I need reminding. I need dragging along. And when, I go, when I'm dragged along, unless it's something I'm like kind of really enthusiastic about, in which case I drag other people mm. along who are like me. And I, uh, yeah, I kind of go with the flow. I'm, and I'm just kind of like a typical audience, messy and mm. lazy and forgetful. And so, um, yeah, I've had a look through the programme. It all looks great, but I'm, <laughs> uh, but I'm just kind of on the voyage here. I'm just going to kind of go in and see what happens. Some of it will be, um, some of it will be kind of. I'm thinking, yeah, why am I here? That's always the case. Some of it will be. I'm, I'm, this is brilliant, I'm, I, and I'll be scribbling and tweeting mm. and so on and so forth. So I'm, and I don't know what yeah. that. Is going to be. I think and that's I had a typical the, audience and, perspective, absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing that I want to say is that, um, um, you know, the value of these events, um, you see, I don't know what the digital, digital experience um, for the, the, the viewers, mm. you know, are having. But being here, it's less about the content and the, the learning and, oh, I've got to go back and take copious notes and stuff. You know, I'm just kind of here soaking stuff yeah. in, meeting new people, there's an energy, there's a buzz, mm. I'm picking up ideas, and that is an intervention. Mm. I will go home and I will be a slightly different person. Yeah. I'll have listened to things in a slightly different way. He's taking my computer. Oh, is that yours? Yes! Okay. <laughs> is that what? Is that what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, tiny... He's stealing my computer. <laughs> Tell him to get... <laughs> <laughs> right, she's okay. one of the co-audience uh, Yeah, but she still so can't have my computer. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get that back to the yeah, So uh, Anyway, yeah, um, you know, so actually it's kind of being here. Mm. Um, and have you ever attended a conference online or watched a live stream? Was there, was there any... I think it's different because I think that you're on your own and it's just like you and the computer and... Yeah, you haven't got the smells and you haven't got the, the sort of sense of movement and also all of that kind of peripheral vision all the way around that you're only, I'm just looking at you or you, um, whereas actually while I'm talking to you, there's a whole kind of world going on out there and, and it's tickling up my consciousness, you know, my dopamine so circuits are going in over so there. overwhelming, there's certain aspects that people can't attend. So if you can't attend, but there is a live stream, and there is there's the things that you would want to come for. What would <clears throat> what would enhance an experience if you were forced to watch out a conference rather than attend? Say if you had been to a conference in the US and this was happening today, and you would have been flying, and you thought, okay, I'm going to stay an extra day in New York. Or, and, and watch it live. Well, look, here you go. Um, I think that if that's the case, I would be very keen to... It's like looking at what's on TV tonight. Mm. You know, I'll go through my, my uh, TV planner on, Sky, on the Skybox, and I will tape, I'll record what I want from that, 
and I will sit down and I will go through. And so I, the on-demand aspects I'll of the live stream demand. conference. And so, you know, TED Talks, for example, uh -huh. I'll want to pick and choose. Um, I wouldn't probably, but this is me, I probably wouldn't just sit and, you know, watch the whole thing through mm. unless it was about something that was really really important to me mm -hmm. uh, personally, uh, professionally perhaps, or maybe I educationally if I was doing a course on it. You know, if I'm doing a master's in cultural management and stuff, then yeah, you know, I think this would be excellent. On the other hand, you know, um, it's great to kind of dip in and dip out. Yeah. It's just like switching on the news, the 24-hour news channel. It's rolling through. Um, you pick up different stuff. It's fun. It's lively. You come and go. So... You know, I think there's kind of different levels at it. I think the engagement at a digital level, and I speak mm. as a complete um, non-expert, <laughs> and I don't have the, you know, the evidence to, to back this up, so it's purely anecdotal in my own experience, is that um, I think the engagement, the engagement is less. Mm. I think that you opt into uh, a digital experience mm. Um, and I think that possibly it's a more structured experience mm. and you do it for a specific person. Yeah. So I think especially in the Nordic regions, there are audiences that haven't been able to come from Finland and Iceland and Greenland, um, as one of our bloggers has come over from the Faroe Islands. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's that remoteness of... of well, certain... I think geographically, yeah. Mm. I mean, it, it is absolutely fantastic. And... Um, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it'll be very interesting to see what the feedback yeah. is from this. Mm. I mean, are we able to look at the ratings? Are we able to look at the viewing figures? Yeah. And how much, and also, what is it, the heat as well? That, how many people yeah. click into one particular segment or not? What sort of comments have come through? Well, I just had uh, well. the virtual RTV New York tuned in this morning, and I asked her um, whereabouts she was, what she's doing. And she literally just took a photo of her where she is and having a coffee. And so we've got like a reverse kind of finding out where people yeah, are actually yeah. watching the stream, which is, they say, I just woke up in the start, thrilled to tune in. From the last four hours, we've had about 935,000 views on Twitter right. in, the, in the 270 tweets that I've gone out. This is Twitter, yeah. This is Twitter. Uh, um, what about the live streaming? About 85 were tuned in at one point. Yeah. Uh, we've got about 250, 300 people at the event. So if we can get that up to similar amounts tomorrow we've got a you know a, an audience reflection in the cloud which would be amazing yeah because we've never had that kind of duality before between two places but i'm really pleased in the last four hours we've sort of gone over a, a, a million kind of impressions but then 140,000 uniques so collectively that group of 300 tweets that's gone out this morning is hits you know 120,000 different twitter accounts which yeah. is great amazing in terms of audience in four hours yeah. No, you can't get those kind of metrics from Oh, no, 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 yeah. no. No. This, is, this is the, the uh, Twitter wall's working really well. As, you know, it's, it's doing its job. We've got a great leaderboard. Scott's one of our bloggers. Yeah, Scott's over here on this table. He's, he's just tweeting away. Oh, is Scott one of your bloggers? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Scott's okay. over there. He's doing a great job. So. Yeah, well, I, I was speaking to Scott this morning, actually, over, yeah. the, over Twitter. We were having a side conversation by the way i have to say i did tweet this this morning it's really difficult uh listening to the speakers right. looking at their powerpoint presentation while they're Confusing. speaking yeah 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 um meantime i'm tweeting i'm reading other people's it's tweets work. then they're not i've got notifications coming in i can't do it no. you can't do no, it no, no, you, can't. you are multitasking so all the time i am tweeting or looking at other people's tweets i'm not looking at uh, well, that's it, and I, I think there's, there's some of that balance is like with the bloggers they were asked which sessions would you like to attend and those sessions that they selected there is no obligation on them to blog or tweet during those sessions if you want to write about them afterwards that's great but they have you you do have to decide whether you're going to engage or amplify or whether you're in there for personal reflection i think it's a conference attendee on the ground that, that's a huge skill to learn, I think, in this well, digital I age. mean, it, it is a skill. It is a skill. But it's also, I mean, 
multitasking is a fiction. Mm. We, know, you know, <laughs> it, it does not exist. What we what we see is not multitasking, but some people are very good at task switching. Yeah, yeah. So you you can go from tweet to listen to that to that to that to tweet to tweet to write. But are you and, taking it on board? But, yeah. Well, maybe you are or maybe you're not. I mean, you get caught stenographers or yeah. interpreters who are able to do this. So it is definitely, there is a skill involved in it. But the, but it's not possible to do one thing and another. You've right, got right, cognitive right. load. Your right. brain will yeah. only do one thing at a time. It's like the computer will actually only do one operation at a time. It's just how quickly it can do those operations. And our brains are built on that principle. So right. thus, um, I think there are some sort of practical and philosophical issues underlying, uh, for example, blogging and tweeting and so on, mm. during creative experiences. Because, yeah. for example, if people are in a concert or they are uh, at a theatre show they're, and they're tweeting, they are not listening to that yeah. music. Their concentration is, is lessened. And also I know, uh, especially sort of musicians and some actors have mentioned, it's actually quite distracting seeing somebody's face light up in the audience when they're <laughs> Things go off. Yeah. Um, but well, I, and but and I taking think, photos. Yeah. But I, I do, and I've said for a long time that I'm, I'm a huge advocate for bloggers' night. So we have press night and a bloggers' night where the lights are up a little bit. You can blog and tweet as much as you like, but for all the other performers, performances, please turn your phones off. Yeah. yeah I think there, there's... But I think that's absolutely great. Yeah. And I think that's good. But well, all I'm saying, even on those bloggers' night, those bloggers are not having the same experience that they would have no. if they were sitting there but they're quietly attending. But they're probably there to amplify for either an audience. Or... I think that's great, no, but it's but, a different yeah. experience. Yeah. And I... So... You know, I think there are some really interesting issues about it. And it'll be interesting to see how that pans out this afternoon mm. with the digital... Um, mm. uh, the digi it's all right. It's the plate of uh, meringue and cream there distracting me. <laughs> it's, it's mine. I need to get back mine, over I, to the... You do. You know, I, I think we should release you to, uh, to your networking. No, listen, I just... Please do not give my computer no, away. No, 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 this no. It's no. my computer. We will, we will look after it. We, we have power. That's what we're here for. Yeah, and it's... It's rubbish. It went from 75% down to 25%. Well, you, you're hour. charging now. We'll yeah. keep it here. We'll yeah, look thank you. It. So uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. I'm sure we'll grab you by the end um, of the conference to talk about your session, which is going to be in Rima B tomorrow. Yes, uh, should I give a plug to that? You can. Yeah, it's going to be called, I've decided what it's going to be called now. Um, actually, have you got the brochure? Have we got the brochure? We have the brochure. Let me get the brochure. There's the brochure. Under some more meringue and cream. My thing says, uh, oh, so we're a bit further on. I have to say, um, it's my own fault. Module three. Oh, it just says Audiences Europe Network with Rick, Richard Hadley. Audiences so you're free form. So would you like to title your session now then? It's called, um, it's called, uh, oh, I've forgotten what it's called. It's something, <laughs> it's called. You need more food, you need meringue. It's been distracted you. Yeah, it was something like ripping up the rule book. I had a really good yes. title yes, I think for it, but I've forgotten, it. but I'll come back yeah. to you on that one. Well, we will catch you on at the end of the day and see how you've gone. Or maybe tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow we'll, morning yeah. maybe. Yeah, when well, yeah. we've, we've All right. been entertained. Catch you okay, later. Rich, cheers. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> cheers, Rich. Thank you. Right, so we're coming up to half past one. Um, I just wanted to give a bit of feedback to CJ about... Um, I asked the question... Mm -hmm. on, the, on the Twitch stream about where are you watching from. Yep. And our lovely, lovely, lovely Catherine Jones from Virtual Arts TV. Uh, at, is it at Virtual Arts? Mm -hmm. I think it's Virtual, yeah, at Virtual Arts TV. Um, we're hopefully going to get a stream, a Skype with Catherine tomorrow, uh, have a bit of a chat about American audiences in terms of uh, what she's doing at the moment. She's reaching out to a lot of schools in terms of having live streaming integrated into the syllabus, I think, and, get, and get, make sure that more of those things are covered in terms of the arts. So good morning to you, Catherine. I love the fact that you, t you, know, you tweeted in your... In your uh, yeah, what's we're having lunch. The and US thing. are just kind of That's getting weird. up and just having coffee. Up. So looking at the schedule, we're heading back in 10 minutes, uh, 1.45. We're going to switch back to the main live stream in... Uh, I keep wanting to say Nautilus... Like it's some kind of ship, um, like it's some kind of metal ship. I think we're Nordlus. 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 Yeah, I've got the Nordlus bit. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a 145. We're going to try and do a app attack with some of the bloggers, hopefully, 
in uh, the main session where they're going to do a, an intervention of some sort. There's going to be uh, um, some music or, or, or something. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. And then we're doing a breakout, uh, breakout three. Uh, Magnus is going to that. Blogger Lounge, Ida is going to be here. And then we're going to, I'm not sure what this is, the handover to the studio comes back to us. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing breakout, the crowd and digital cultural policy. So basically in about 10 minutes time, we're going to go to a stream from one of those sessions. So if you are just waking up in the, in the US, hang on in there. You will get into one of the awesome bits. We go back awesome over bits. to Nordlus where they're going to introduce module two. Yes. Which is an analog girl in a digital world. Yes. And our bloggers will be going into um, a bunch of different breakouts after that main live stream. Um, we have six of the seven bloggers. One of the bloggers couldn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, Alex, Alexi, Alexi, Alexi couldn't make it. But we do have uh, people that are covering other, room, uh, other rooms. So they, they kind of feed back via Twitter. If you're following the hashtag ArtsOrd14, then you'll find out all these guys are actually making little bits of content. And they're also the critical friends of, of the event. So they'll be asking all kinds of questions, things that they don't understand, mm -hmm. things that they want clarification. They're kind of putting that out in the Twitter sphere. And it's really helping, actually, with getting the audience known. I've had a few people say, oh, I'm just tuned in. Where's the live stream, et cetera, et cetera. If, um, if you are watching the live stream and you think somebody in arts and audiences will be interested in this, please do retweet that out. It's uh, arts and audiences.com forward slash live stream. And I think I've done enough gassing. I've been chatting for 45 minutes. Is that Slack? I love Slack. Slack is amazing, isn't it? We can do an apps review. I, I, think, I think maybe we should see if we can bring some of this conversation that's going on on that table over to... Well, you can take the mic. I wonder if uh, Ollie can spin the camera around to that table. Ollie, can you yeah, follow you me? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> follow CJ. She's the roving mic. I am not going to. We should have some music. That's sort of we like should have the, music, the, shouldn't you we? You can't go through there. I can go through here, though, go can't I? Oh, this is I can go through here. Set now. Uh, I don't need the mic for around here. You're on the mic, CJ. I'm on this mic. We can bring the camera to you guys. Okay. Do tell us. What are you up to? Well, we were just talking a little bit about, um, you know, I was going around to different mem uh, in the participants and asking them, you know, what's a big stressor in your organization? And, you know, why are you here? What are you looking to? And a lot of individuals that are working at dance institutions, at museums, they're all pretty much saying the similar narrative thread that uh, we are very passionate about this, but maybe someone in leadership or on the board isn't so passionate or doesn't really understand the importance of it. So how do we get create, their, that, create that buy-in? And so, so that's just been an interesting thing to explore, sort of these needs that all these participants have and hopefully how it could be fulfilled cool. in the conference. Yeah. So, how are you yeah. finding it, Max? You're doing a session later, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing a session at 3 o'clock. What's your um, session? Uh, well, it might sound boring at first because it's called something cultural policy. But it, it is really interesting <laughs> when you get down to it. We'll stand this side of you yeah. and then we'll stand uh, Because it's... Um, but what, what, what happens when we aggregate all this data, for example, 50 million views on this, the, who is earning the money on this? And, and how uh, are we organizing the feedback loop to the cultural institutions and those who are producing the content? Uh, and what could we in the Nordics do to collaborate better around this? Because as it is right now, the aggregating pages or aggregating actors uh, are exporting all the, the, the their gains uh, through Irish companies, and thus we are uh, eroding the tax base. And the tax base is, of course, very important. Uh, most of the institutions who are represented here have probably over eighty percent public funding. Mm. So it, it's very important to to look upon these relationships, and that's what the uh, uh, presentation is about. Oh, thank you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, basically that's what well, we're going to look at some yeah. cases about that and uh, look on how the digital cultural economy looks like. Because now we, we have gotten some snapshots of, of different things and we have heard how great it is to uh, engage with audience. But what actually happens when we do this? Who, who wants us to engage the audience and why? Why, why do we want this now? Why is it such an important case? 
that, and there are of course big economical interests behind this as well, which we have to be aware of. I mean, um, there are economic interests, and also everybody who works in the industry is looking. Everybody's looking for a personal revenue stream, whether, whether it's a wage or whether you're a freelancer or. Um, but but I think there is as much passion as there is for artists to be compelled to create. I have discovered that audience development professionals are compelled to build communities. Um, that they are not. They are compelled ah. to build communities, and it, it's finding the way of breaking down some of the cynicism sometimes of the general public. I think they've had so much thrown at them of marketing this and different ways of doing it and consumerism that when it comes to arts and culture, the people behind it are so passionate about why they do it and the things that they're exploring, you know, artists who are trying to, you know, open a perspective onto an issue. You know, art is an incredibly powerful tool. Um, so why... I've heard a few things of how it's difficult to build audiences. Why do you, why do you think there's sort of some difficulty in uh, engaging? But I, first of all, I think it's important that we, we look at the terminology that we are using. Mm -hmm. Because we're, when we're talking about communities, that is also very fashionable in the IT sector. Uh, and you are supposed to build a community around very many different things. And... Uh, it can be around the Volvo brand, or it can mm. be whatever. Uh, and d just the use of of the word sort of like uh, meanders uh, through. And the, the the cultural sector is always a, a, sm a smaller mm. dimension, a smaller cut of society. I mean, the, even if you do a great work in London with the developing the dancing, there is probably 4% of the population that will appreciate that form of art. Wow. Well, we're going to end there, but I have discovered we're going to cut away. We are with you in Room A for your session. Fantastic. So, So everybody can now walk there. We're going to send the camera over, yeah. and um, we'll see you again after the session. We do. Bye.